I think all of the C9 players are doing really well. People say they're lacking individual skill, but are good in team fights. But I think they're really amazing, like individual players. You get so much good practice playing against C9. They're just all really good, and they play really well together. Welcome back to the 2014 North American LCS Spring Split. We're just moments away from the showdown between the top two teams in the league, Team Solar Mid versus Cloud9. But first, I'd like to welcome Counterlogic Gaming's deadly duo to the desk, Double If Naframu, Rush Hour. Yep. How you guys doing? Doing well. Great. So tell me your thoughts coming into that match. How did you feel coming into uh, the game against Coast? Uh, I felt really confident because even though we lost versus XCG, I felt like they didn't really beat us. We just kind of beat ourselves through really bad decision making. But we kind of went over it and we got over those little like bumps that we had against XCG. And we thought that if we played just as well against Coast, it should be no problem. Okay, Afro, how do you feel like you guys did in this game? In this game, I felt very comfortable in lane, and I felt like everyone was confident after our team meeting discussion with Moni before and after this game, so okay. it was really good. Everything go according to plan? Yes. All right, so what was your plan then coming into this? What were you trying to accomplish? Our plan this game was really rotational based, where we just have to go even in bottom lane, and the solo lanes have to keep uh, Coast's assassin, you know, they like to play assassins, yeah. just go even in lane two, and just have Elise try and counter gank the Wukong, wherever he's going to go and mm -hmm. apply pressure. And that way we can get one tower in one lane and then they can start rotating throughout the map and then we can start grouping with our poke comp with Ziggs and just win the game after that. Cool. So I know one thing you guys talked about in the preseason, uh, before the, the season really started, you said that CLG can now carry from the bottom lane because sports getting more gold. Double lift, you always say that you're going to carry a game anyway. How have you guys felt like? Have you been carrying from the duo lane here? Um, recently, yes. Recently, yes. Yes. <laughs> Recently, yes. Only because now we're more coordinated with the jungle where we walk together to get vision control, so it's not as scary bottom. And normally I feel super pressured when we don't have any vision control, and usually we lose the 2v2 all-ins or something random happens and we die. But right now I'm just in a really comfortable place, and there's only the only way to go is forward. So. Okay, well, that's good. You guys are doing pretty well so far. Now, Double Lift, uh, we have a replay. W one of two we're going to show here, and this mm -hmm. is you saving... Uh, I believe it's saving Link. Uh, he gets jumped over the dragon wall here. Oh, I have to save Chouster because he gets... Or, or, oh, I saved Link here. You're right. Yeah, yeah Link just this. got caught. His first immediate response was, hey, guys, I'm dead. And I'm like, no, 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 just come down. That's cool. Because I know what has, what's going to happen right here. Leona's going to eat him. And what, what always happens is, like, oh, she actually throws her ulti right here. But if she had eat, I would have just knocked her away, like, after she was done eating. And there was no way that Link really could have died. And I just blocked the ace in the hole. It's really easy. It wasn't really that great of a player, to be honest. I just kind of blocked Ace in the hole and E'd the Leona. Uh, I feel like they, I don't know, Coast just really likes getting picks. That's their style. They, they, you can always guess, like, if one of your teammates is in their jungle or in river or something, they're looking at you and they're looking to kill you. Okay. Um, they don't make, like, team ride rotations or anything like that. They generally just have shifter, like, roam, or they have their jungle, like, look to make picks and just get kills, and then they'll look for the objective, like, after. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a misstep by us, but it was pretty clean game overall, except uh, I played really bad. So tell me about this, because you said they're a team that looks for picks, and they found a couple of them on you. What happened? Yeah. Um, well, the first one, they 3v1 dove us, and I knew it was coming. I'm like, Shifter's coming. Everyone knew that Katarina was coming to die bottom. That's just what he does on Katarina. That's mm -hmm. his kind of like signature move is Shifter really loves to run. And uh, so we knew it was coming. We said, Link, just hide. Come counter gank this after they dove us, and I died. But it's totally fine because we got three kills out of it, and that set them really far behind bottom lane. And I ended up actually getting a kill out of it, too, so I didn't even fall behind. Oh, wow. um, and the other times that I died... I just played really bad and got hit by like a trap or like a Leon ulti or something. <laughs> and yeah, oops. I was just really sad when I died. What's that? Oops. Yeah, oops. oops. <laughs> just the oops. Okay, so after we have uh, another replay up. It's the, the big Baron fight where you win kind of a 3v5. Get that up on your screen. Tell me what happens here. Uh, honestly, here we died bottom lane after Peter got caught and we were like, we have to stop this Baron. So Nian's super far ahead, super strong, and we're like, okay, go instantly on the cat. We can kill him instantly. And then. Go on with Fujin right here, and Nien's just so far ahead top lane from farming, we just rolled him over after the fight. So you just basically focus the right targets, and yes. then we have more health bars than you? Yep. Yeah, the most important thing here was to just get their two uh, primary DPS off, which was Wiz. As soon as you go on Caitlyn, he's not going to be hitting the Baron, which means they're, they're just taking Baron for free, and Wiz died, and then you just kill Shifter too. He's the reset like potential that might lose you the fight, and then there's just these three useless tanks walking around. It was really easy for to clean up after this. When you were low in the Baron pit, were you afraid that like it's going to kill you, or were you just like, uh, I know Chaos is going to come over and flash over the wall if I need to? Yeah, actually, I had flash right here, and I was thinking about flashing over because Afro had just went ham on the Wukong, and I was like, if Wukong's dead, they don't have smite. But in the end, uh, Chaos was like, hey, I'm here tanking Baron with you, so you know that's that Child of Synergy, dude. Child of Synergy's <laughs> back. back. Yeah, it's, it's back. back. 
How has it been playing with that lineup again? <laughs> like Chester overall. is amazing, dude. I really like playing with Chester. Obviously, he's more like he's a friend first, and then he's a teammate second. Like I really like just hanging out with him and talking to him. And obviously, he's an amazing player. Like he's played really well throughout this whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, he provides like really good analysis. And another shout out for Imani because he really helps us like get our shit together. For sorry. That's fine. <laughs> for uh, these games, we r we really need him to like drill into us like when to ward, how to ward, stuff like that. Uh, just really basic stuff, or else we just kind of fall apart. Well, I'm glad that you guys are still learning the basics here in the LCS. Good job, guys. <laughs> now, after Moo. Uh, all right, next matchup, C9 versus CSM. Where's your money lie? C9. C9 Why? is just really good at objective like control, you. and I do think that C9 has the better lanes. Double? Uh, yeah, C9 too. Uh, not for reasons why people might think. I think Balls is a monster. I talked to Nien about mm -hmm. how it is to lane against Balls, and apparently he's just gotten progressively better and better and better, whereas, you know, the, I mean, people's perception about Dyrus is he's just kind of stagnant. He's just, he's good, but he's not, like, spectacular. Okay. Um, so Balls is now actually just carrying his team on his back, and I expect that to happen again. All right, well, guys, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on your win. We'll see you, of course, next week, and maybe you can keep your winning streak going. Guys, we got the game going on. Let's send it back over to Riven Jat for the call for the battle for first place. Thank you very much, Freak. And it is finally time for our game of the day. First place team Solo Mid versus first place Cloud9. Yeah, with all the hype and excitement for this game, if it lives up to even a little bit of it, it's going to be pretty gay. Decides first place. Yep. Remember, though, Cloud9 has won eight straight against TSM. And no one in NA has been this close to, T to Cloud9 in the wild. I think uh, the fans have. <laughs> And of course, we've got to talk about Bjergsen coming into this match, Jet. Yeah, Bjergsen has won the MVP in both weeks. He's kind of rightfully titled the Bjerger King at this point. He's consistent and he's been deadly. He is leading the NALCS in kills, despite only having one or two kills yesterday. Yep, and aside from their little hiccup against Dignitas, Cloud9 has looked untouchable, to bit. say the least. Mm -hmm. They were brilliant in their two wins yesterday, and they're the ones with the third game, three-game week, too. So yeah, it's the big third game. They're trying to go 3-0, and Medios was on fire yesterday. He leads the NALCS in kill participation percentage as well, 84% kill participation. Also, his map coverage has been excellent. You can see 5-0 and 31 on Lee Sin in just two games. A ridiculous scoreline. He can engage the fights and also get out before anyone can focus him down. And Jet, uh, these are the clear-cut powers of the NALCS right now. Everybody's looking forward to this matchup, but people are still kind of scratching their heads how a little Yordle named Teemo could have impacted their first meeting so much. Surprise picks are always annoying to deal with because it really tests your ability to adapt and adjust to the game. Teemo coming out of nowhere, and he gets him with the mushroom. When people know what to expect, they kind of follow the flow of the game, and they're really relaxed. But when they see something like Teemo, they don't know what to do anymore. And even if you know what the champion does, it's so long since you've played against him in lane that you can, it can unsurprising damage. Teemo with his Q burst and then like a shroom, it's a lot of damage that you just don't expect. It's kind of hard to adjust against that because against Teemo, he was actually not that strong, but we were so scared of the shrooms. So sometimes a slightly weaker pick can be a big surprise. It can force you to play more passive. And that's a bad thing, actually. If you're not making aggressive moves, you're always reacting to plays. You're not being proactive. That's exactly when solo queue comes into play, because there's so many more champions played in solo queue, you actually get to experience these unconventional picks. As long as you don't let it uh, get in your head, you should be able to take advantage of those kind of champions' weaknesses. And I love the point from Bjergsen, the slightly weaker pick can still have an impact. Yeah, as long as you do or do not know how to play against it, it makes all of the difference. Yep. So as the teams make their final preparations, let's send it down to Kobe, who's standing by with TSM's coach and owner. All right, thank you guys. I'm here with Reginald, the owner of TSM. First question, I have to say, Reginald, your entire team seems to be sick. What are you doing to... Uh, help the health of your team right now. I'm staying away from them, first of all. So <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's the point like, Odd One, you're sick. Stay in that corner, stay away from the guys, don't get the other guys sick. And es essentially, got everyone in the house sick. And Expecial's the only one that's not sick. He's like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. I feel fine. And so everyone else is sick, I'm sick. Uh, we're just recovering and we're staying away from the sick guys. So you're just quarantining off anyone who gets sick. That sounds like a great strategy. Uh, in our game coming up, though, have you prepared any special strategies for Cloud9? Because it seems like you guys may be brewing a bit of a uh, heated rivalry here. 
So we haven't really had a good record against C9 so far, but we're really focusing on the results of the season. We're just taking every match one at a time and just focusing on our overall play. And so anyways, um, it's the same thing. We're going in like it's every other match. And um, once it gets to playoffs, we're going to be designing specific strategies for each team. But for now, it's just the same. Okay, so have you guys developed any like rituals before matches? Like they do the same thing over or you deliver them any inspirational words? So, I mean, I tell each uh, person different things specifically, but overall, I'm like, don't lose. If you don't lose, you're going to win. I tell like special. <laughs> I tell like special to focus on his engages. I tell a turtle, don't flash in because if you watch turtle play, he always flashes in for the kill and he always gets caught. That, that was last season, though. He's in a lot better now. So I'm like, just hit the closest target. You're the AD carry. And Bjergsen, I'm like, just win. And then for Odd One, I'm like, um, really, you guys shouldn't be afraid to lose. You know, this is a match. Just take it as a learning experience and really just uh, focusing on improving. And don't be scared. Don't play like a weenie. And don't play too ham either because I don't want them to play too aggressive but not too passive. Yeah. All right. Some top-notch coaching from Reginald. If you don't lose, you will win. Now... Final question, final question. I'm sure uh, pretty much everybody here knows. Uh, we do have to ask you for the predictions for this next match that's coming up. Pretty sure everybody knows what team that you're going to vote for uh, in the upcoming match, but do you want to give the crowd a little hint what team you think is going to win? Come on, guys. TSM, let's go. TSM. As expected. <laughs> Pretty much expected that one. Now let's send it back up to the guys on the desk and we'll get this one started. Thank you very much, Kobe. And if they don't lose, apparently they're going to win. That's how most games go. Right? <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. You're going to check out the starting lineups on the blue side. It's Team Solo Mid. Dyrus in the top lane. Odd one in the jungle. Bjergsen in mid lane, your two-time MVP. Wild Turtle at 80 carry and Expecial on support. And a team never to be underestimated on the red side. It is the reigning NALCS champions, Cloud9. Balls in the top lane, Medios in the jungle, high in the mid lane, Sneaky on AD, and of course Lemon Nation on support. Now we take a look at our featured matchup of the day in this game. The rumble in the jungle between Team Solo's mid mid's odd one and Cloud9's Medios. Yeah, we actually realized that neither of these guys have been killed so far this weekend. The Odd One has had mostly a supportive jungling style so far in his mm -hmm. career. With Bjergsen, has just taken his game to a completely new level. He has been a new player this season, it really seems, uh, which is crazy considering he's been around since the start. One of the few remaining veterans in the LCS. Of course, Medios on the other side is still pretty new and still pretty awesome at the jungle. His KDA oh, yeah. is always at the top. His kill participation is higher than any other jungler. He is the catalyst for almost everything that happens on the Cloud9 team. And this is definitely the marquee jungle matchup. And really amazing amount of assists coming in on Lee Sin. To look back at Odd One as well, it's great to see that because we mm -hmm. see all of these we'll back up see all of these longtime players stepping down they've kind of the passion yeah. isn't there anymore they feel like there's a better peak player to hit them but to see Odwin come back into that after being one of those longtime players is great especially for fans of TSM and for the team yeah and I mean every lane in this matchup has so much story behind it as well I mean it's obviously the odd one Medios kind of old versus new guard in North America yep Dyrus we just heard double if talking about how Nien talks about balls and Dyrus how Dyrus has always been strong, but sometimes he's stagnant. Maybe right. he hasn't improved his game too much. Whereas Balls, he may be the MVP this week. He has played two amazing games thus far. And if he can beat TSM, it's going to be impressive. The impact these top laners have is almost more than any other team. And they do it so well. Kha'Zix, Kassadin being banned out quick and directed bans to start off. Yeah, Cloud9 always quick with the banned fingers. They know what so they want. Far. Kassadin and Olaf right there. A little surprised on the Olaf ban. Ottawa hasn't been playing too much of that so far in the LCS. Just back in week one. He hasn't yeah. touched it since. Exactly. Just the one victory. Where can they go with this? One more ban to come out for Cloud9. Lemon Nation on your screen. He is the man with the book in hand. Calling yeah. the shots for the picks and bans. And there's usually not too many surprises here once you're through the picks and bans. Obviously the Elise ban away. Makes the jungle a little bit interesting. If they really wanted to attack Medios, you would think that they would go with like a Vi pick, but Medios has played so well on Lee Sin that it now becomes uh, about the mid lane. 
This, that this, makes sense. This yeah. was a LeBlanc free zone, I thought. Yeah, where's the LeBlanc? No one, we didn't think High or Bjergsen Whoa. would get to play that so far. Uh, two wins on the Blanc for High. Bjergsen has played LeBlanc, I believe, once, but just yeah. destroyed on it. So he's never got the chance to play it again. It had been banned three times against TSM so far. Uh, it's a pretty bold first pick here. High has played many different champions in the LCS here. Uh, I think he has an answer for this. I mean, I think back to the week one matchup where Cloud9 basically wanted TSM to pick Nunu. Uh, this was their strategy going into right. the game. Odd one did, and then they picked Teemo instead to overcome their map control. Maybe here, they wanted Bjergsen to pick LeBlanc, and then they could beat them with a, a very right. resilient composition where no one could get bursted down. Uh, maybe very heavy pushing in the mid lane. I'm not sure. They need to show that they have a plan. That comp with Nunu was also Dyrus on Nasus. It did not work out for them. Their plan seems to be straight to the heart yep. of whatever TSM has. The Renekton and Leona. Balls is Renekton has been the scariest one I've seen in North America. Elimination also had a very good game against Coast on Leona. Lots of initiation and, and just tankiness right off the bat for them. Very nice pick up there. Odd ones Vi. Erickson is going to take Caitlyn for Wild Turtle. Safe picks there. Yeah, and what's strange about this champion select is Cloud9 are usually the ones to pick something immediately and then throw it back to the other side. But here it's really TSM doing that. Cloud9 waited till almost the bottom of the clock to lock in Renekton and Leona, whereas TSM locked very quickly right here. I feel like Cloud9 may have been taken a bit by surprise by the first pick LeBlanc. I think they were expecting TSM to go with uh, something different there. Maybe they thought they were going to first pick Leona or something along those lines. Maybe the Gragas, that's still left out as well. They could have anticipated that. It, it does look like they are considering, though, how do we stop this roam now? Bjergsen's yeah. going to be everywhere. I also really wonder if High's going to break out the Yasuo. Uh, he would have until the very last pick. He has one win. Yasuo can do very well in lane to block a lot of LeBlanc's spike damage if he's incredibly reactive with his wind wall. Oh, the Zed. Second Zed Assassin play battle. coming in for High, and Sneaky chooses to lock in Ezreal once again. Well, these guys have practiced against each other so much and kind of leveled up each other's play off of it. Anyone knows how to play Zed. It's one of these two guys in North America. That'll be a very fun, dodgy battle. Yeah, I was going to say, very blink heavy. Uh -huh. if you want to get yourself around into secretive positions or out of a sticky situation. Mundo Annie is the lock-in we see coming from the side of TSM. Two lanes that they are very familiar with. Yeah, so the Caitlyn Annie lane coming in. It's a very common lane. Uh, can sometimes chain the Annie stuns with a Caitlyn trap. Wonder now they're going to be going against Leona Ezreal. This means that Cloud9 gets to pick their jungler. I, I think it would just be the Lee Sin to continue. Three in a row. But they are rather low on magic damage. I wonder if uh, Meteos has something up his sleeve if he would throw back to like a jungle Eve or something. Oh man. Even though Diamond very recently did the Blade of the Ruined King like tank Eve, which is Absolutely. Or, Which or is if, diamond. Or if they actually want to do a jungle Zed and completely mess with TSM. But magic damage from Fiddlesticks, of course. I almost said that was going to go somewhere, then I forgot they picked Leona. So it is in the jungle. <laughs> We're going to see Meteos going in on this. We've seen tank, we've seen well, damage. This this will be damage. I believe he played Fiddlesticks in Battle of the Atlantic. Uh, and was okay. and was victorious with it that. against Fnatic. So he has that. played it in a very... Uh, high pressure game before. It is the magic damage that Cloud9 really needs. And for once, Cloud9 can kind of rely on Lemon Nation a bit more to do the initial initiation so that Fiddlesticks can then combo on top of it with his Fiddlesticks ultimate. They, during Battle of the Atlantic, I believe they comboed it with a Thresh, so it was a little bit easier for him to get in. There is a little bit of disengaged danger from TSM on this one, but these lineups look pretty stacked for both sides. Very interesting. I like what we have as the teams load into the rift. Let's check out who you think is going to end the week in sole possession of first place. According to LOLEsports.com, 72% of you think that Team Solo Mid will walk away with a win today. And remember, eight games, Cloud9 has defeated TSM. Yes. Obviously, there is a lot of confidence behind this TSM team with Bjergsen. When they lost to Cloud9, they were only 0-1 with Bjergsen on their side. They were a new team now. Well, both of these guys have the home corn advantage, but you can hear who has yeah. the bigger one. Yeah, TSM always with the most vocal fan base. It was a huge boon for them back in season two when they dominated the North American 
uh, online or offline tournament right. circuit. Cloud9 has gotten a lot of fan support thus far, but obviously they have not eclipsed TSM's fan base yet. So loading into this game, uh, just a quick pick to touch on. Sneaky's Ezreal again. Kind of yep. saw him doing the Blade of the Rune King, Infinity Edge, mix up build. Absolutely. See if he goes through it again. He does have to face a Mundo yep. once more. That was a very interesting build by Sneaky and very effective. Oh, keep an eye on. Blade of the Ruined King to last Whisper on Ezreal, just to take out tanks. Here it is, Jat. Everybody has been waiting for it. The guacamole and chips and dip are ready for TSM versus Cloud9. I feel like if I went to watch a League of Legends game, I wouldn't want to wear a mask. <laughs> those two guys having fun. A horse or an eagle mask. I'd be, the, I'd be an eagle, though. Yeah, me too. I think the horse is just, it's, it's flooded, the population. Sore There's too many the horse. Crowd. Horses, hooses. There you go. Horse. <laughs> well, we got like a clap right. going on for TSM here. This is like Morse code TSM. All right. <laughs> you can tell everyone's been waiting the whole day for this one. This is the big game of the day, Riv. It is. It is. Medios. He's gonna start it with a ward too. Ooh. Well, obviously, knowing he has drain on fiddlesticks, he doesn't need yeah. the extra. <laughs> some Classes dedication. Still going. He doesn't need the sustain of health potions. I wonder if he's just going to bypass his Spectral Wraith jungle item as well. There's a very real possibility he's just going to rush his on his Hourglass. His positioning is very interesting so far. Are they going to 2 very v 1? Bjergsen in middle? Leona's hanging up out top. Mm. Cloud9 slowly waiting this one out. I'm not sure why Cloud9 does this, uh, but they often position. It is usually sneaky. Yeah. They pretty much always position their AD carry in the mid lane. And I think it's if they want to react to any lane swaps, it is easier for them. Right. Uh, because high is generally not going to go anywhere but the mid lane, so they can always rotate him up, and then that means they could rotate their AD carrying support anywhere else they want. So by going in mm. that configuration, they can meet any demands that they actually want to hit. And you are correct, sir. Looks like we are going to have high moving up towards that mid lane. They do not have anything they need to adapt to just yet. It's going to be the solid 2v2 in the bot lane and the regular mid. This is the matchup yeah. we wanted to see, though, especially high Bjergsen. And then our matchup of the day here, Medios and Odwin in the jungle as we started off. Yeah, and we get to see a jungle fiddlesticks. Medios, the only guy to play this this split over in North America. And Tendudex played a little bit of jungle fiddlesticks back in season three. Mm -hmm. It was tank fiddlesticks, though. It's pretty clever. It worked out. Played it in more than one game. Yeah. I believe they found the victory with it in uh, more than one occasion. What is kind of the pressure you see out of a Fiddlesticks? He's not just going to come flying out into the lane. Yeah, a lot of it is just the fear of fear when he comes in. It used to be a lot longer. Look at that aggression early. Oof, almost hits the double Q as well with the Shadow. Bjergsen's now going to play a little safe. Yeah, Fiddlesticks also brings a lot of disabling. If you can find the right silence bounce, it's probably the most underrated part of Fiddlesticks. Mm. Uh, how many people he can shut down in the team fight? Like, even if he's not ulting and getting good initiation, if Medios can land a fear onto Bjergsen and then combo with a silence, they can burst him down in a team fight when he decides to come in. Not bad. It actually looks like he dipped right from blue to red as well in his fiddle run. Yeah, the, he, Fiddle's the type of champion who can do that. So that's why he didn't hit level 3 quite yet, but mm -hmm. he doesn't care. He's just trying to right. uh, have his own unique type of jungle routes. Yesterday when we were watching him play Lee Sin, you could tell he had put a lot of forethought into his jungle pathing. One of the games he even didn't have his blue, and he still didn't fall behind in the jungle. Right. Medios definitely prepares his jungle routes uh, more optimally than most junglers would. Yeah. And when you say it was the same route, it was literally down to a T, mm -hmm. even in his ward placement on the invades. He knows what he wants to do, even if he gets deterred from the path. He'll stay straight on it. Yeah, right now, these junglers are reading each other's minds. Medios came because he thought that Odwin would be in that brush, therefore he warded. But before that happened, Odwin had warded over the wall because he thought Medios would be there. In each other's heads. Yeah, and it's really kudos to Medios. He's going to have to, he doesn't really have the counter gank ability. He sits on the outside, and they're going to watch him walk in. So to have the wards there and not have to really show himself is very yeah. good for his position right now. Fiddlesticks ganks are not that good, yeah. but they're also oftentimes just completely underrated. It's not like he has no impact whatsoever. Having just a ranged auto attack with red buff is sometimes enough to secure a kill. <laughs> so true. Four minutes into the game. We'll see if any of those get transferred in the bottom lane. Not to be soon. The junglers will back, so we don't see the use of any of those buffs just yet. We'll see what those first buys come to be as this bottom lane shows six favor CS in, in for Wild Turtle. Yeah, at the moment, Caitlyn Annie just outranging them on both mm -hmm. accounts. Annie 
longest auto attack range of any support in the game at 625 against a Leona who is a melee champion. So unless Cloud9 wants to kind of commit into TSM, they're basically stuck just getting harassed down little by little. Meteos backing, prioritizing a pink ward already so they can start to gain control of the map quite early. Mm. Yeah, heavy warding by Meteos, which is rather interesting on Fiddlesticks. He's basically just going to be farming uh, until level 6, I think. So it increases the priority that Cloud9 has mm -hmm. on Vision. They do not want the odd one to swing a lane as important as mid, which is where odd one's going to be going. Let's not make any mistakes about it. Uh, so therefore... Cloud9 and Meteo specifically wants to keep high safe with wards since he can't right. necessarily keep him safe with jungle presence. Meteo's already picking up that sweeper as well, possibly thinking he'll hit six out on this run, give him a little more of an advantage with that ultimate to get in. We'll have to see. These guys definitely feeling each other out so far. Top lane is our first visit. Ball's not really yeah. pushing in Dyrus too well, but has the small advantage that one would expect in a Renekton lane. And surprisingly, Meteos is running up to the top lane. He's actually trying to predict the, a Vi gank from the odd one here, but he's not going to find it. And they have a good push on the lane, so it would be a nice read. But like you said, there's no worry for Dyrus, so the odd one will not be there. Ooh, to have the he's gank. found the pink ward. That is big right there. Meteos thought that pink ward would last a very yeah. long time, but odd one decided to ward that brush, and he gets rid of it. Very nice job by Odd One, giving themselves a little bit of a, a power play there on the pink ward purchase. We see Dyrus getting pressured back to the lane. This will call Odd One to the top lane. Everybody's fending for themselves right now. Yeah, very interesting move there. Wow. By Meteos to just walk up. He was basically trying to make Odd One show himself. Uh, a little bit of miscalculation there where he would have been. Great calm play by Dyrus. Got to give him credit there for not going too hard on the kill. Would have got himself killed. And the first blood is still yet to be had as we approach seven minutes. These teams giving each other quite a bit of respect in the lanes as Bjergsen tries to force out high, but oh, he goes in. He gets them right back to his shadow. Goes for the death mark. It does not spike enough damage with the ignite stopping. Well, that was interesting to say the least. We knew that mid lane was going to be all about the kill. As soon as Bjergsen's silence chain had ran off on high, he decided to counterattack, but just not quite enough. I think one more auto attack and high could have had him, but Bjergsen made his retreat. That's just some mechanics in mid lane on both ends. I have to see if the ignite is actually used from Bjergsen and odd one here. High's everything is yeah. down. Still yeah. a slippery champion, but that could be a focus. Yeah, this means high actually has to play on his back foot for quite a while now. If, Bjerg, if all the odd one does is just like flash into ultimate range, mm -hmm. High is most likely dead as long as that happens before High's death mark comes back up. And they might just try and rotate right now. Meteos needs to do his best to get in position that he can protect that uh, and fear it off with a fiddle alt. This is going so great for both teams right now. The, the, the farm is almost identical in every lane. There's a bit of a discrepancy there in the top lane and just a few farm between the 80 carries. but. These are the two top teams, yeah. and it's going to play out like this through the game, the entire game. We're all expecting a very close game. Uh, this has definitely been a, a slightly slower start than we may have expected. I think that comes from Meteos picking Fiddlesticks. Mm -hmm. It slows down the early game for the most part. He is now waiting uh, and just hoping to get a Fiddle Alt fiddle off yeah. for a counter gank right now. But the mid lane gank just isn't coming. I think one of the reasons this game is so slow is there's a huge mind game going on right now between Meteos and the odd one, trying to catch each other ganking the mid lane. Since Cloud9 knows how mid lane focused TSM has become, yeah. and Meteos just wants to catch the odd one trying to help. He may have done it here, though. Let's see what they can get themselves into. Hiding just they off the him. wing. That's a level six Meteos. They're going to get the fear down. The silence goes out. There may not be enough damage here on the follow up, but that could be enough for Dragon. Yeah, Meteos deciding not to alt there, instead just drain and force the flash away from the Odd One. That will help High not get ganked because Odd One can no longer pull off the flash assault and battery. So I, I just say the mind games continue so far. Still no big set of action, uh, but that mind game goes to Meteos, which means now Cloud9 may have an opportunity to make a play. Well, Jad, it's no coincidence that these two teams are in first place. They're the biggest scrim partners for each other. They know what each other do. They're giving each other a lot of respect. And they know the game could swing at any point in time. This will help Cloud9 a little bit in that favor. Yep, very tactical dragon right there by Cloud9. Dyrus actually burned a teleport 
believe, just to, I think he just used it to get back to the top lane. I could be wrong on that one, because Balls had cycled down for a potential Dragon TP. Ooh, if he picks up that red buff, it might give him the ability to bully a little bit, because Meteos doesn't necessarily need it. That's a very smart buff transfer, in a sense, to the top laner. Lock down this bottom lane. Sneaky is a little behind in CS being forced to back here. So this, if Wild Turtle stays, he is going to get a bit more of an increase on that lead. Sneaky is not going for the Blade of the Rune King build. Just yet, though. No, looks like he's going right <laughs> yeah. with Bloodthirster. Doesn't need as much elusiveness in this game, or Blade of the Rune King would just end up killing him. You can see that ward spot, the odd one. Loves to control that spot. Second ward he's placed there. Just spotted Meteos. I wouldn't be too surprised, actually, if Meteos asks Hi to pink ward that brush again to get rid of the Odd Ones ward. Just because these guys really seem to be in each other's heads right now. Sneaky with a pink. Yeah, that's going to cleave over the try and check. Oh, man. Hmm. No, he didn't. Slowly. A lot of patience here coming in. And it has to be when you play Fiddlesticks. Yeah. Never really know where he's going to be. He can theoretically alt over that wall and try and get something crazy, but he's just kind of backing off because they don't have eyes on the odd one at the moment. Yep. There's always the rule of thumb that you should consider someone is in the bush every time, and even yep. more so with the fiddlesticks because it's going to mean an instant zero on your right. HP. So these guys still feeling each other out. Let's take a bit of a look at the items. Brutalizer mm -hmm. completed on a high, uh, and also... Double Thorns for Bjergsen. So while Bjergsen hasn't went like a full Seekers for defense, the Double Thorns is respecting itself to have the little bit of extra health. Both those guys are fairly vulnerable. Lemonation might go hard. A very nice ultimate there. Solar Flare goes down as well as a True Shot Barrage. Can they finish out Wild Turtle though? Especial to the back line, stopping a good amount of damage. Sneaky, very low. Especial, no flash. No, I know he just uses it all. Wild Turtle's Peacemaker, first blood on the long range. And they might continue. They're trying to take with Tivers. They can't Ooh. get the double. Wow, Rip. Lines it up in a sniper shot for first blood. That was a perfect example of how to stop a Leona as an Annie. You don't go for the Leona. You go for the 80 carry. So Lemon Nation gets trapped in there by himself. X Special just finishes him off. And the Tivers are just beating on Sneaky that whole time. Dive top. And they're beating on Dyrus in the top lane. He gets hit up. The attacks go down from the turret. Balls makes it out alive. Action reaction right there from Cloud9 and TSM. Meteos knows he can get that ultimate off on Dyrus. They've been working so well with Balls this week. They're trying to get him going. Instead of playing into the mind game of everyone ganking mid, Meteos heads top lane, gets a kill, and they can even out the turrets. We shouldn't expect anything different from the two best teams in the league. I expect a lot of this gameplay nice to be move. mirrored. A nice death mark. He can't follow up on too much damage. The Ignite's there. But again, it just doesn't equal the amount of health he needs. Nearly enough, but once again, yeah, High burns both of his summoner spell. Very nice move as he ulted as Bjergsen was trying to go in on him to dodge the damage, meaning Bjergsen couldn't attack back. But at the same time, High could not secure the kill. Therefore, he probably shouldn't have burned everything to yep. go in that far. Now he is down summoner spells and also down health. There's that wild turtle peacemaker. Did pick up first blood as he comes up behind in mid with a special now. Bjergsen may start some type of roam, or he may just go ahead and join Wild Turtle in a special back in mid. Yeah, now the rotations, I think, begin for TSM. The Caitlyn, Annie, will definitely try pushing in a whole bunch. Sneaky not necessarily pushing the bottom lane, more so farming. So there is a rotational advantage for TSM right now, knowing that they also harassed high back. It's very difficult for Cloud9 to hold this. Who is going to clear the wave? Leona? No. Fiddle? No. They're going to get a lot of damage. Yeah, they're going to be able to use this. They got three long range. Although it's not doing too much damage, it is going to force Leona have to go pretty much for broke if they want to yeah. engage on this one. And the turret's there for TSM. They don't want anything more. Yeah, they got a decent chunk of damage. They're going to be back yes. to that one fairly soon. Uh, the next point of contention is going to be this dragon. It's going to happen in about a minute and a half. I think Balls is very much wanting to hit level 11. He's 10 and a half right now. He can get level 11 before this next fight. I think Cloud9 could absolutely control that zone. And this dragon is also more valuable uh, than the last one. And in a game as tact tactical as this one, uh, a small goldie like that can pay huge rewards. Small goldie right now is in favor of Wild Turtle. That kill, and the Bloodthirster already charging. So the ace in the hole, a better finisher now than it was before. 
Sneaky's actually going to start stacking his. He just purchased that. So, again, these guys are staying very mirrored across the board, except for what we just saw. I have to say, every member of Cloud9 has actually purchased a pink board at this point in the game. That's a good point. More damage coming down on the mid lane. They're definitely trying to get some of TSM's wards out, so Lemonation can roam and get some good alts off. Also, because Fiddlesticks is more ward reliant than most other junglers. Whereas Vi can brute force a gank through a lane if she does like a flash vault breaker, Meteos cannot. They need the pink ward control so that he can find positions to attack. Teleport is up onto Dyrus. Looks like we have... Here comes the dragon control. Wait for the defense on mid turret, but you're right. It is going to trickle down towards the dragon. And the pink ward is going to be able to be taken out here. And Cloud9 is going to set themselves up. Yeah, they're going to want to go straight on this because Dyrus is pushing the top lane as quickly as possible. They're going to be daring TSM to come in. There's the initiation! Oh, the flash vault breaker going in from the odd one, and then he does the assault battery, but he is in a 2v1 down to the bottom of the screen. They're trying to zone out the entire team with the Crow Storm and coming in with both. Got, Got him with the true shot barrage. It's going to be a walk away for high. It's going to be Dragon. And the rest of Cloud9 just walked towards TSM, and they had to retreat. It is now a 5v3 near the Dragon. TSM trying to take the mid turret as compensation, I think they'll get it. This is going to be good for them. That was a very interesting initiation to be going in onto high. Did not work out for TSM, and they got to rethink that one as Cloud9 pulls a bit in the lead. Yeah, I'd love to see the other side of that fight where Cloud9 just walked through the majority of TSM, but it was really just not wanting to deal with the Fiddle Ultimate and the Renekton Ultimate just pushing the rest of TSM back. I'd say the odd one got a little antsy with that initiation. There was no follow-up there because they had to watch out for everyone else. Watch Balls, Lemon Nation, and Meteos all fly in over top of X Special. Turtle and Bjergsen could not counterattack, which then meant on the backside, Cloud9 could finish off the rest of them. A very crisp zone control fight there by Cloud9. Very interesting. They even saw Meteos taking out the pink ward just before the engagement. Odd one wants a little bit more. Gives a quick punch to Lemon Nation, and they back out of this engaged. Looking at Lemon Nation, actually hasn't built up that coin to the Talisman yeah. whatsoever, but the Moby Boots keep everything, or sorry, special. Yes. Keep the Moby Boots running. He's going to be trying to just get in stun rate at that point. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lemon Nation hasn't been going for the gold generation whatsoever. He's really worried more about just getting tank stance as yeah. quickly as possible, and then trying to get the gold off of objectives and kills. So far, so good for him because they have controlled both dragons. And with Cloud9 slightly taking a lead here, we see sweepers being used a bit more. TSM has not made that transfer over just yet, yeah. but that also is a catalyst for that fiddle. Yes, it speaks to the fiddlesticks and the importance that Cloud9 is putting on vision denial, almost more so than vision acquisition right mm. now. It is more important that Fiddlesticks is not seen than Fiddlesticks sees where the enemy is. Therefore, three sweepers yeah. this early, despite not having huge map control. This little play by Wild Turtle. He's getting as much aggression in as he can this game. He yeah. actually, earlier in the mid turret, walked right in front of Lemon Nation and taunted him. Yeah, and he's definitely showing the rewards in the CS column right mm -hmm. there. 175 Highest in the game. to 136. So fantastic farm from Wild Turtle. But now the split push begins yeah. from high. And we just saw Bjergsen even doing a little bit of roam of his own, putting on that hard hat and getting in the jungle. But this allows Hyde to be in the bottom lane they're trading back a little bit of global gold there. This map is going to be opening up a fair bit now, which makes the ward control even more important. Top turret down for TSM, one bottom in, turret one down in the other. Line. Exactly. At the moment, it seems like High is stronger than Bjergsen, and Renekton is stronger than Dyrus. Right now, uh, it looks like it's Cloud9's time to try and make an aggressive move as they push mid. Sneaky, Medios on one side with Lemon Nation and the support on the back. And I like what Cloud9's doing. They're not just putting everything up front. They have high on the side, trying to do a bit of pinching. All right, three turrets on both sides. The map is about as open as it gets in the mid game here because the gold is even. These games can go in almost any direction once you get to this point. Um, there's much more open field now. So if anyone tries to push lane, it's inherently more dangerous. Team fights also stretch longer because there's nowhere for people to run away. And whoever whoever makes the next move, it just means it's even more swingy because then you're taking down second tier turrets and so on. So these are, these are always very interesting games when they reach this point. Looks like the entire map is getting warded up right now. Neither team is letting that go to waste. We see the pink wards still coming out, both from the odd one and Medios, but Cloud9, or Cloud9 actually has more members buying up pink wards than just the jungle. Oh yeah. 
Absolutely. Blade of the Rune King's going to be trying to get finished by high as well. Sonya's rush was, in fact, what happened on Amidios. Yeah. No Could surprise there. A little bit more potential to get in the fights and be danger. Yeah. Mainly so he can put himself in silly situations <laughs> and let hit the rest of his team follow up, which is kind of what Cloud9 excels on sometimes. See if he can make those plays. I haven't really seen a Crow Storm be the change of a fight yet. They were able to get a good engagement down onto Dragon, but it wasn't a full fight mm -hmm. of both 5v5. Just TSM 5. running away. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit of a turn tail. 20 minutes into the game, a 2,000 gold, a 1.6 actually. So we're not up to that amount just yet, but it's still close enough to be completely anyone's game. The Deathfire grasped soon to be finished on Bjergsen, and that's when we start seeing him get those kills. Yeah, something that's going to get more and more interesting too, Riv, is whether or not Cloud9's affinity for sweeping lenses hurts them because Ooh, they're still another. open to getting picked off by the odd one in Bjergsen. And even X-Special, it's not like TSM doesn't have pick potential in their team composition as well, but it is Cloud9 that is sacrificing wards so they can get rid of TSM wards. There's a lot of fog on this map right now because all the wards are really getting killed by Cloud9 and not placed by Cloud9, so that TSM doesn't need to sweep them. Interesting pink ward placement after the mid turret goes down. Cloud9 really owning their own half of that bottom jungle. Yeah. Well, they want to control that area for the next dragon fight. Right. Many places for Fiddlesticks to hide. Very good point, and we will see where Medios is. He's seen by a ward right now. You see, he takes a, a bit of a oh, different path than the team, him. and they know that he takes a different path. The Zanyas comes out, and they waste a good bit, but is it going to be worth? They turn around the fight once again, and it's deja vu in the same spot. Who's going to turn tail on this one? TSM has already lost a special. Yeah, the answer is it's not worth it to yeah. go in and try and stop that Zanyas, because that's exactly why he wanted to complete it, so he can be in bad situations and still let his team capitalize on mm -hmm. that. X-Special flashed to get the initiation, but then had no retreat, and Meteos' team went to back him up. Always having this man down. TSM keeps adapting. They say, we did top lose something, push. but let's try to move, and they go for top. Yeah, this is a good move, because they know that Cloud9 would want to cycle around the dragon anyway, so they can then trade an inner turret for a dragon, which, if you're actually picking, would you do this normally? The answer is generally yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Team Solo Mid keeping their head in the game, making sure that gold stays relatively close, and High is going to do what he can to push the mid lane. There's so many things that Cloud9 is prioritizing, but they're able to do them at the same time. Yeah, these guys not necessarily fighting each other, but definitely trading a lot of map resources. Oh. Uh, finishing this turret might not be possible. It's very dangerous for us. Oh, he gets locked up. He didn't expect Bjergsen to be there, and it's going to be big damage as High goes down. So overstaying is welcome so he can finish the turret. He would not have finished the turret if he didn't fall back. Now, overall, the gold gain from the turret is greater than the death. But the question is, what does TSM do while High is down? They are now gaining control of the Baron Pit. That is very hard territory to fight over, and Cloud9 loses it because of the death. That ace in the hole to start. Oh, the Solar oh, Flare goes down stun. behind, but Levin Nation not in a good spot. The chain goes out. The burst could be there from the second hit of Bjergsen. He goes for it, and it's going to be the odd one to pick it up. Good positioning now for where they are. All right, that takes out another kill, and that's all because High was dead. Sure, Cloud9 could have fallen back more, but they needed to have safety near that barren area. Let's see how long Cloud9 continues to reel off of that chain of events. The dominoes slowly falling here in favor of TSM. They get a few more kills in their favor. That 2,000 gold deficit still is ticking on the as back. As far as Cloud9 goes, TSM is doing Baron right now. Do a Baron, but there's Turtle coming up. Whoa! It's going to be the Zanyas. No and he flash just left, walks though. this one up. It's going to be enough to pop him down. Meteos will not be a factor in the next engage. That's one more for TSM. They continue to capitalize off of this chain of events. Now Cloud9 is trying to push mid. TSM could very well secure this Baron. That turret is very low in the mid lane from high previously. They see it now. Going to be able to take it down. It looks like they will go for Baron. 16 seconds on Meteos. Bjergsen is low. He is going back. This could be a 3v4 in the Baron pit. TSM may have to fall back. It's getting very antsy here. The smite is going to be up here. Coming in for the they odd one. They the go odd into the Baron pit. Bjergsen has to put himself outside as the passive gets worn off. Odd one grabs it up. And it looks like Lemon Nation and Balls are going to try to do what they can. Dyrus and Sneaky having a 1v1 tit for tat. Odd one out of the brush. Out of the Baron pit, I should say. And they're trying to keep Baron alive on them. So they do have the Baron buff, but how many people are going to lose it? Odd One is still on the run. He's going to try and hop over the wall, get away. Bjergsen finds Dyrus, or Bjergsen and Dyrus, I should say, find High, and he gets out of that one alive. 
Everybody limping away from this one. Still a slight engagement here going on between Balls and the odd one. He has that Baron regen. A quick a shield to put it on. Up. Here comes Leona. Lemonation from the side. He gets the vault breaker over the wall. The rest of the team still trying to fend them off. And the fight just goes on and on with how long will TSM run away? Looks like this could be it. I mean, there's a blue buff. Somebody might want the blue buff, they Jack. The cleaver. But the Baron is still taunting them. That buff is just going to crush Cloud9 if they stay here. There's too much regen on TSM. Oh dear, so that was a lot of cascading events that happened off of that one. It was good of TSM to focus the Baron and take the results afterwards. They did not lose many turrets, they did secure the Baron, and they only focused one death. Overall, good job by TSM. So breaking things down here and slowing them down a little bit. We take a look at that jungle matchup, a rumble in the jungle, a Fiddlesticks versus a Vi, and it's... Yeah. Medios is being focused now. He's not getting enough time to alt. Well, if the team is scattered, then Fiddlesticks doesn't necessarily have setup time. It's not so much about him being focused, it's the TSM just caught him in bad positions. Right. You know, Odd One is using his uh, assault and battery very much on him, and he's an absolute priority mm -hmm. as far as that goes. One thing to note, actually, um, is when a Mundo has Baron buff, it's a little bit ridiculous because not only does he get uh, health regen based on his max health from his passive, yes. Baron health regen by nature is also based off your max health. So it kind of doubles in the sense, I since Mundo always builds so much max health in general, he just takes it to absurd proportions once he gets that Baron buff. It's kind of like a Baron and a half. Yeah. Works out nice. So you can just leave your W on once you have Baron buff on Mundo <laughs> and you will not leave full health. Get down at the 80 carries, we see Wild Turtle really consistently in this type of aggressive play. Wins the lane at 1, 0, and 2, and he is 60 CS above his lane. Mm -hmm. Wild Turtle going to be hitting that last whisper pretty soon. He's going to want to cut through balls. That'll be a very, mm -hmm. very interesting uh, duel if they can find clean initiations. But just based off, based off the way TSM found that last fight, you know, these teams aren't the type of teams that just agree to fight 5v5. They're always going to be looking for that slight edge. Cloud9 yeah. tried to get the turret, took one death. What did that lead to? It led to a complete chain of events. It meant Lemonation got caught on top, which meant that Meteos then had to check. Then he died, yeah. which made the Baron fight, which made the push mid. It's not like they're just agreeing to meet in these places. It's always an action and an adequate reaction. Yeah, there were three people, like you said, that went down off of that. TSM is controlling the map very well with communication and movement. They're just not looking for champion kills here. There's actually not a lot of those to be had in the game just yet. Blade of the Rune King has been finished, obviously on high for a while, but that's where he's been sitting because of this Hex Drinker coming in, obviously mm -hmm. the Brutalizer for the cooldown, but Bjergsen gave him a hard time in lane. Yeah, the gold froze a little bit for Cloud9 recently with all the action TSM was doing. They haven't had much time to farm when dealing with this Baron buff. Flash initiation! There it is again on to Meteos! Forced to use the Zanyas and he's not on Crow Storm. Goes down instantly. A huge amount of DPS is consistently Although being lost. If Meteos gets caught out at the edge of these fights, Cloud9 will not win this game. A pick that does not seem to be working in their favor. The crowd still very much so behind TSM as they were in the beginning, and it's helping them pull ahead. Yeah, and with High going now to try and take a Dragon, they are fully conceding this inhibitor to TSM. They do not want to fight it any longer and create another chain reaction. 28 minute inhibitor, a little bit quicker than I thought would come from this game, but we still could go into the late game. This is gonna be going down, but they are fully rushing down here for High. He's gonna shadow, get safety. The shadow's just been used. They know where he is. Uh, they're gonna be chasing him for a little while. Let's see how slippery High can become. We'll see how much Cloud9 can work off of this if TSM decides to kind of tunnel run on him. If he can bide some time, they can get these lanes pushed and Cloud9 can start yep. getting them out of their base. Against it. Nice pathing by High to get out of there. And it's one of Cloud9's hallmarks, actually, that they... Ooh, gonna have to lifesteal for a little while now. That Cloud9 can keep the gold even, regardless of when they start making mistakes. Even though they suffered deaths and lost two turrets there, when they made the call to get the dragon, it helped equalize the gold. They're only down one and a half thousand gold, despite forfeiting a Baron yeah. and losing a couple team fights in a row. Meteos kind of has to go into sneak mode now. Being seen pretty much means yeah, his he's death. He's got to be much more careful about where the odd one finds him. 
Uh, that jungle matchup has definitely trended towards the odd one in the yeah. last few fights. First few fights, Meteos was out mind gaming him. Nice wards, burned the flash on odd one, controlled the dragons. And now that Meteos is having to use his Zhonya's defensively while he's not channeling Pro Storm, uh, has been very detrimental to Cloud9's overall success. Let's see if oh. they want to go for a fight here, though. A little weird on the positioning. Oh, the Talisman of Ascension. Can they find him? Here no. Comes. Medios is not ready, but he is going to be able to get the ult in this time. He comes in. The Crow Storm is in the fight now. And it's going to be pushing TSM back. They still drop two members immediately of Cloud9 with only a special going down in the fray. So overall, a one fight by TSM. Let's see if they turn around now. Balls does not have too much longer on that Renekton ult. That chain missing. Really, everybody's just looking for the next mistake here. Somebody to go outside of their boundaries, and it's not going to happen. Everybody plays it calm, gets their composure back, and we're going to get some wards cleared out. So we really got to see there the resiliency of the TSM lineup. Even though Meteos did channel a fairly good ultimate inside with balls there, they couldn't get much damage out. High went all in on Wild Turtle, came up with nothing. The QSS stopped the death mark right as it went in and that is a troubling fight for Cloud9. It actually tells TSM they can win this one. That was a close to ideal team fight for Cloud9. Yeah. And TSM still came out on top two for one. We got to see the Crow Storm and it did not prove to be what we thought it would. The Quicksilver Sash bought out by Wild Turtle so he can keep himself safe yeah. from whatever Meteos tries to throw at. Having 300 farm 30 minutes on AD carry is quite high. Uh, Dyrus is going to be able to escape. Since he stole that blue buff, his ultimate's on a very short cooldown. 50 seconds more and it'll be back up again. Uh, but the Baron is live. See what Cloud9 can do. We kept hearing in the beginning of this game that everybody gave Cloud9 the stronger Cloud9 the stronger lanes. Right. And that was usually with Meteos helping them. He wasn't doing anything up until 6 this game, so it looks like TSM came stronger in the lane this game. Little Sticks is a slightly different pick, and also Wild Turtle did so well. Yeah, really came out on top. In lane against Sneaky Elimination. At this point, though, Cloud9 is put in a very awkward situation. Knowing that Dyrus' Mundo has a teleport up, normally the play to stop that is Cloud9 would go around Baron and then force him to come in. But since Cloud9 is the weaker team, they don't want to posture around Baron. Right. So I think if TSM plays their cards right, they can either secure an inhibitor for Dyrus or a Baron for themselves. Cloud9 does not have a lot of good plays here to make. It's got to be on their terms, and even when we saw it on their terms, it was still a stretch of a fight. They only got a special because he threw himself so far into the back line. 3,000 gold lead has been accrued here. The Mikhail's Crucible is out, so... So even much. Whatever. QSS on Bjergsen, yeah. QSS there. And a fight in the Baron pit with Baron up! There it goes, True Shot Barrage comes through with the Solar Flare. Medios coming in from the backside. Can he get there? Odd one, feared up. He's gonna be taking a lot of damage, but Bier or Medios goes down to the blink of an eye. Sneaky on the backside, has to shift away, and he can't put DPS into the fight. Ix Special goes back in with the Flash and the Ignite still up. Wild Turtle taking down Ezreal. High goes down as well. Team Solo mid, almost a C9, but take the Baron. And the TSM chance coming out four for zero right there for TSM in the cleanest fight they have had yet. With the Baron, they take a commanding lead in this game. 33 minutes in, they're gonna look to push. Taking one more look at this fight, you can see Lemonition tried to go into the Baron because this was the best fight they were gonna find. Meteos, though, gets exploded by Bjergsen. Watch this burst. Bjergsen is waiting for him. They stun him with Annie and burst him out. Everybody wanted to kill him before he could Zhonya's. At that point, since the burst was out from high, there was just no sustained damage left on Cloud9, and it's just clean up from then on out. A quick one, two, three punch. Jat, you pretty much said it. They can do whatever they want. They can dictate and drive the game to Baron. Yeah. Cloud9 bit it. At that point, there were not too many options left for Cloud9. So good execution by TSM. And honestly, that's what Cloud9 had to try to do. Cloud9 is the better team in this situation. That fight has just catapulted Team Solo yes. into a huge gold lead. 8,000 gold over Cloud9 right now. A swing that we did not expect to see in this game. We thought it was going to go straight neck and neck. But TSM is showing that they came very prepared for this matchup. Yeah, and now that there's the big gold lead, you just kind of can see uh, the team compositions really coming out of top four. TSM Mundo has substantially outscaled. Balls is Renekton. Thorn Mail and all versus heavy physical damage on Cloud9. Uh, makes him almost unkillable because Meteos 
isn't going to be focusing Darius or doing damage. No. He's going to be trying to get fiddle ults on the rest of the team. So all Darius has to worry about is that armor. And then when you consider uh, the relevancy of the rest of Cloud of Cloud9, Wild Turtle and Bjergsen can can think about killing whoever they want. They built the QSS so that High is no longer a threat to them either. And their damage is sufficient because they're sitting on so much gold. Five kills on both of the main damage dealers. The gold distribution could not be better right now for TSM. 504, 505, and a good 2200 gold. Almost 2300 sitting on Wild Turtle. Lord. And you can see just he how is. comfortable they feel being in the lane right now. He doesn't yeah. feel like he needs to spend it. There's too many opportunities to be had right now. It's 3500 gold ahead of everybody on Cloud9 right now. Just the farming he's been able to do. He's actually saving up for an Infinity Edge right now. Yeah. It would nearly cap off his build. But at the moment, since they have the Baron buff, and as we talked about, a close to untouchable nature, they're going to want this one. Cloud9 may try to flank from the back and have one last fight. Here comes. Solar Flare, dead center of absolutely nothing. TSM is going to be able to pretty much waltz around this as they recuperate yeah. to what's going on. Oh, half health from wow. one ace in the hole. That is not yeah. what you want to see coming down in damage. Level 17 Wild Turtle means uh, that thing hits pretty hard. It's hitting for 1,183 before armor is taken into account. Just the one spell. And that's before his Infinity Edge Riv. The game has just seemed to slide in TSM's favor. We kind of said that it was slow picks for Cloud9 coming in after they saw the LeBlanc. Maybe they were not expecting that. Well, Cloud9 needs to wait on the Leon Ultimate before they can try this again. They need the Leon ultimate not to whip to have a chance, but they're going in before because oh. they do not have the time. That's the third time Turtle's been really close. Yeah. He gets himself out with the flash. The Quicksilver as well is there to assist. They're trying to go in on this, but there's not much damage coming from Meteos. It's like the fight really wasn't engaged, but it is a special taking down Lemonation, and he is again in the forefront of the fight with the rest around. of the team. Balls is the one getting hit up. They're going to take him down and hit him right in the name. Sneaky goes down next. Meteos is on the board as well. The Zanyas goes, but he goes down. I think this is the game, Riv. That was another clean fight for TSM. You can see Cloud9 was not going to let TSM whittle them down. They went all in because it was the only chance they had. And now TSM is on the list. An amazing game, Team Solo Mid. Going to take sole possession of first, first place over Cloud9. Give them their second loss of the season. And they're going to look to be 7-1 and one now in the spring split. See, TSM is really happy about this one. This is what they were trying to do when they brought in Bjergsen from Europe right here. They wanted him to dominate the mid lane for him, for TSM, for Reginald, to let everything else work. Wild Turtle has always been a fantastic laner, but if he gets focused in team fights, which he had in the past by Cloud9, things would turn sour. But right here in this game, it was Bjergsen and Wild Turtle. Too many threats to have to deal with. The odd one was able to neutralize the years. TSM takes first place in North America once again. I think that's some of the best medicine that team could have got right now. They all had the flu. Very difficult week for TSM, yep. but they come out of it undefeated once again. Reginald, their owner and coach, very happy about that one. Couldn't have gone better for them. It looks like they tossed up Cloud9 in, in the picks and bands and got them all flustered. The Fiddlesticks picked to come out, and it looked good in the beginning. But it seems like just TSM knew how to get under the skin of Meteos before he was able to get to work. Yeah, Meteos had a couple good early fights in the game, but then after that was just never able to transition his fiddlesticks. Despite uh, Cloud9 going for four sweepers, they weren't able to get the map control to let Meteos get off the alts. And we actually mentioned in the mid game uh, the danger Cloud9 was going to run into when they sold all of their warding trinkets for sweeping trinkets. We you mentioned, thought, hey, yeah. Maybe maybe TSM is going to be able to catch Cloud9 out of position. And that's actually what happened in multiple situations, because both of these guys had very pick-oriented team compositions, and TSM were the ones that found more picks. And props to the odd one. It was just the one pink ward that we noticed he took out, but he was on complete ward duty, continued pink warding for the team, and was trying to seek out Medioses at any point in time to keep those alts off the map. Yeah, it was, it was very well played by TSM, and I really think we have a, uh, an expanding rivalry here between yeah. TSM and Cloud9, you know? It's the first time TSM has kind of fought back, and uh, there's an old saying that, like, a, a series doesn't start until both teams win a game, and now TSM has started the rivalry. They've finally been able to defeat yep. Cloud9. 
And it's all, it's game on from here. They're going to be battling over first place, I think, for the foreseeable future. I don't know, man. Maybe we'll get some more Teemo picks in there for Cloud9. Maybe they need it. I don't know. Teemo would have been killed by Bjergsen a lot of times. There were a lot of champions that got through this time. Kragus, LeBlanc, yeah. very interesting picks in bands from what was considered. was non-picked and non-banned. Uh, you can definitely tell there's a lot of, uh, I hate to use the term metagaming between these two mm -hmm. teams, but it's kind of true. It's a game within itself when these two teams play each other. They know their strengths and weaknesses. They know the picks and the counter picks. And something that may seem like a very strong pick in a general sense isn't a strong pick between TSM and Cloud9. So how does this work for Cloud9 now? A lot of people saying Cloud9 needed the win. Obviously, mm -hmm. TSM needed the win. It was our question of the day. I feel like Cloud9 can bounce back from this, though. Yeah, I, I think they can absolutely bounce yeah. back. Cloud9 is a team that has had to bounce back a few times in the past, you know? Uh, and this isn't exactly a devastating loss for them. Remember, it is a regular season defeat to TSM. It's just extra ceremonious because TSM had never beaten Cloud9. It's a milestone moment for them. And Cloud9 is kind of shown to be mortal. You know, it's, right. it's, it's not like it's the end of the world for there. It's like, oh, wow, they didn't beat everybody in North America. The sky is falling. It's not. Cloud9 will be fine. Well, with our first, uh, first place match mm -hmm. completed there, we do figure out that TSM now holds sole position of yep, first place. Absolutely. A very well-played matchup, and it's something that we need to look to, towards the future for for these guys mm -hmm. because if they can just kind of, even in a sick state, even yeah. well having kind of been under the weather, put themselves in this position and win so handily against the best team, yeah. what are they going to do? You know, for the rest of the season. I know. It's going to be a very interesting season. I don't think Cloud9 is going to hit 25-3 and three again. They'd have to only lose one more game for the rest of it. It just means we have a very exciting season coming up. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the standings now that we are three weeks deep into the NALCS Spring Split. Thanks to their first ever win versus Cloud9, Team Solo Mid is sitting alone in first place, one game ahead of C9. Yes, and thanks to their 2-1 and one Week 3 performance, CLG has climbed all the way into sole possession of fourth place, while Curse, EG, Coast, and XTG are sitting in the bottom half of the standings. All right. With those standings kind of filling out, it's, it's been good for us. A lot of variety of champion picks, a lot of variety of pretty much everything else we've wanted to see from Nunu's to Urgot's to everything else. And uh, actually, I'd really like to welcome somebody to the desk. Just a few moments. <laughs> we snuck <laughs> him up here. Don't worry about him it. Sneaking him up. I'd like to welcome one of the five guys who are now sitting in sole possession of first place. TSM's top laner, Dyrus. Dyrus, welcome to the desk. It's after an amazing game. Yeah, it was a workout. <laughs> you seem, yeah. you seem I mean, a little stressed. Talk to me about how hard this week was for TSM because all of you guys are battling sickness. Oh, yeah. So basically me and Turtle, we ate like 14 dragon rolls. So we, me and uh -oh. him, I threw up for like 10 hours. And then Odwin got sick. I don't know if it was from us, but Odwin got sick. And then Bjergsen got sick. And then Turtle got sick again. And then everyone's just getting sick. So it's like really, really stressful because it's like, oh, I can't play solo queue. I need to sleep or... You know, I can't get Challenger yet. This guy's feeding my game, and I'm sick, and I'm miserable, and, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. So does that come down to affecting some of the scrims and whatnot? Do you guys try to push through all those? Um, it affects it a little bit because uh, sometimes, like, we'd have, like, scrims with certain teams, and then it'd be like, guys, I feel really sick. I don't want to play. Like, I really, really don't feel like playing because then, mm -hmm. well, Turtle said that, but he was, like, dying, so he just, mm -hmm. like, passed out, and then we canceled scrims, so... We mess out on some practice, and we just get a lot more resting time. So yeah. it's kind of like not as bad as it could be. Even so, none of it really showed during your gameplay against Cloud9. That was a very crisp TSM victory. In fact, there was kind of a turning point somewhere in the mid-game. We have a clip. I'd like you to try to describe uh, what was your mindset going into this fight. If we can pull it up on the screen. It was a mid-game team fight. Uh, you guys were able to win. Uh, if we can get that on the screen here. What were you trying to do here as Cloud9 was uh, coming back at you? Um, so... L Lemon like went in really early so we just went on him and the rest of his team is kind of stuck in that area right there and Fiddle had to like flash in just for Turtle and Turtle mm. just got to flash out that was a really bad area um, for them to fight uh, I think Lemon tried too hard there but um, even then it was just actually no Special made that play yeah Special is yeah. the one who went in and kind of forced right. the initiation yeah um, I think Lemon should have just kept walking back because they were in a really bad spot to fight. Like that little choke point that forced Medios in a spot to where like he has to flash to get to our AD and our AD can easily just, you know, walk out or flash out. All right, going to picks and bans for a little bit. Two things here. Did you guys expect to get first pick LeBlanc and did you expect the fiddlesticks from Cloud9? 
Well, we expected and planned a lot of things. The game went as we planned, and I'm pretty sure they planned the game too. Like, yeah. I, I saw our picks. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they know we're going to pick this. Mm. And um, it was like there's Cassidy, and then there's a Thresh, and then there's Elise, and then you end up banning it. And it's like, all right, this if this hap this is banned, we're going to pick this. And we went into the matchups like – we actually tried really, really hard for this one. We usually don't go this far, but I'm like, all right, this is what's going to happen if, if Balls picks Renekton. He's been doing really well. I'm going to pick Mundo. He's going to dive me top with Meteos at like eight minutes into the game. Like, I know this is going to happen. And then I kind of, I knew it was going to happen. I died anyways because <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I can survive this. And I was like, oh, whoops. But, yeah. Yeah. And this was actually your ninth time you guys have played Cloud9. You'd lost the previous eight. Uh, now that you've been defeated, what does it really mean for TSM to finally take down Cloud9? Um, we finally, we're 1-7 and seven now or whatever. Like, that's really great because co even coming into this match, I felt like, you know, I missed a lot more CS than I could have or I put a ward really dumb or, like, I made two really bad flashes this game. And that's from, like, you know, past traumas. We just usually play scared against Cloud9. Um, compared to like, you know, we don't play how we play in our scrims or against other teams. We just play a little bit more scared than usual because, you know, um, we know what they can do. It's like, oh, they're going to ult here. But this game we're really, really good about. Like, oh, they have Fiddle. We've seen them play this before. Um, we need to get wards out. I mm -hmm. need to buy that blue trinket no one ever buys. I need to, like, get that vision and find them. So as long as we got, had that, we could just kite yeah. and we scaled better late game. So what's next looking forward for Team Solomid? Are there any other teams that you kind of want to headhunt down here? Are you guys in first place and you're just going to hold it? Um, right now, Dignitas has been on the rise lately, so we're going to have to watch out for them. Um, a lot of the players on their team have got, been getting a lot better like recently. Since they had that loss against us, I think they like, you know, really turned around. I had no idea that they're going to beat Cloud9 like that. And uh, it, was, it was surprising. It's just... It looks like they have a boost in confidence and like they're doing really well. And that's one of the teams I'm looking out for, other than Cloud9, of course. Well, likewise, you guys are doing well, very well. Thank you for the interview. Congratulations on the win. And congratulations on first place for Team Solo Mid. Thank you. All right, now it's that time of the broadcast where we hand out some individual honors. Here are our five OP for the week. Yeah, we'll start in the top lane, obviously, where the honor ends up going to Cloud9's balls. He was always a beast in the top lane. A very impressive KDA. Even though he wasn't able to take out Dyrus in that last one, he was strong all week, and we had to give him the honor. And in the jungle, it is Meteos. Even though Cloud9 lost to Team Solo Mid, he continues to impress with well-planned jungle strategies, and he also had a great game on Lee Sin. Not a champ he normally runs with. Yeah, and the overpowered mid for week three was a new guy in the mid lane, Chouster. Amazingly able to come in on two days notice, fill in for CLG, help them to a 2 on one record, yeah. and while the numbers aren't insane, the situation he put himself in to come out successful was impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Our OP80 carry is Chouster's long time and BFF double lift. Uh, got double lift looking like his old self again, displaying some insane vein mechanics in their two wins. Yeah, and finally, our OP support for week three is Lemon Nation. And obviously, his picks and ban notebook. Even though he died 12 times, he always initiates. He was solid on the Ona. They could not come out on top against TSM, but that was not for lack of trying by right. Lemon Nation. So he gets the knock. And while those guys were great, there can only be one. Our MVP for week three is Team Solo Mid's jungler, the odd one. Yeah, and it was the battle between him and Medius in that last one. He helped Team Solo Mid to their first ever win versus Cloud9. He shut down Medios. They went 2-0 this week. He also had a great game against XCG because this is a weekly award. Uh, and to top it all off, he did it with the odd virus, as Kobe had coined it beforehand. So good job by him. And somebody's got to steal the MVPs away from Team Solo Mid. That's three now. Yeah, someone's got to knock them down. I mean, they only lost once in the first week, even though Bjergsen had a pretty good game, so it's going to be tricky. Might help to get some LCS big plays in there. Get mm, yourself on that. Perhaps. BOP or even the MVP. Now, guys, before we send it over to the Challenger Series in just a second, let's take a look at what's coming up over in Europe on Thursday. Peck A and first place Fnatic kick off week four with a battle against Alliance with Lemon Dogs and Team Alternate closing out the day.
And, of course, the North American LCS will be back next Saturday, February 8th, with a full lineup of matches you won't want to miss. Up first, it's second place Cloud9 versus XDG. And remember, once Curse and Dignitas squared off its first Challenger Series semifinal with Skyline taking on Zhao Weizhou and LMQ. All right, guys, don't go anywhere because Kobe and Freak are waiting in the wings to guide you through tonight's best-of-three semifinal matchup between Cognitive and VVV White. Gentlemen, take it away.